Hello and welcome to Unique World Education. In this video of chemistry of grade 11, we will be discussing about the chapter chemical bonding. And the particular, particular topic we have chosen is molecular shapes. So in this topic, we will basically see that how we can actually visualize molecules in real life. So I am going to discuss all the types of molecule shapes that we can have. The first one being AB2 type geometry. In AB2 type geometry, you can clearly see the molecule gets an angle 180 degrees and the bonding angle is 180 degrees and the shape it gets is a linear shape. It, it looks like as if someone has drawn just a straight line. Moving on to the next type, we have AB3 type geometry. So one of the example of this would be BF3. In this molecule, you can clearly see the bond angles are 120 and if I rotate it, it looks like someone has drawn three atoms on a plane or a, on a piece of paper. Therefore, it gets a shape trigonal planar. Moving on to the next one, we have methane. Now, methane looks like a tetrahedron, meaning if you join the centers of all the atoms here, you would get a tetrahedron. Hence, the name tetrahedron is given. And the bond angles are 109.5. The next one we'll discuss is PCL5, which is an example of AB5 type geometry. In this structure, we can clearly see the shape that we get is on a triangular base, someone has drawn bond up and a bond down meaning if you shift the base up and try to join all the centers here we would get one pyramid on the top and one pyramid at the bottom hence the name trigonal bipyramidal and the last one we'll discuss is octahedral type geometry which is also known as ab6 geometry and the example is sf6 here this is the sulfur atom in the middle which, which is shown by a dark color uh, here and the other atoms are fluorine and you can clearly see if I remove the if I move all the atoms in this plane like this we get 90 degree angles across here all the angles are 90 degree and the molecule is octahedron and the shape is called as octahedron therefore these are the molecular shape and uh, that we study in our syllabus I hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much in this video we are going to discuss about motion under gravity so there are two type of motion basically first one motion in a straight line which we already discussed and second one motion in a plane and in the case of motion in a straight line we already found out that the maximum height that object can move is h is equal to u square by g and the max and the total time taken by the object is um, 2u by g so how that is influencing in projectile motion which is motion in a plane so here you can see I kept the object at 60 degree and the initial speed is 15 meter per second. So when you are firing this, so you can see, in this case, the initial speed, the horizontal component is, stays constant and the vertical component, you can see the vertical component, what is happening to the vertical component. Vertical component is keep decreasing. Once it reaches to maximum height, you can see it becomes zero. It's almost zero. After that, when it is coming down, the vertical component is keep increasing. Initially, the vertical component is decreasing, then it is increasing. But you can see the horizontal component that is always constant. It's very important. The horizontal component is constant. But how you can make, how you can change this? When you are keeping air resistance, you can see the difference. So the range reduces. Here, range reduces because we apply air resistance. That's all. Thank you. Hi. Today we are going to be talking about the human digestive system. A very, very important and very beautiful system in the human body. Before we learn about the digestive system, let's ask ourselves the question, why do we have a digestive system? You know, like, why does the human body have such an intricate system what is the purpose of this it's very simple really the same way cars need petrol and the bulbs in your house need current we need food why to get energy and who is going to break down that food who is going to ensure that we get the energy from the food the digestive system right here so let's get right into it what are the different components of the digestive system 
the journey begins right at the top where you can see a long tube-like structure known as the esophagus. Okay, so once you eat food through your mouth, this is the first place that it goes into. This esophagus is essentially going to connect your mouth to your stomach. The stomach, as you can see, is a nice large J-shaped bag right here. It essentially does two different functions. It helps in the storage of food as well as in the digestion of food. This stomach, if you take a look right behind it, is going to connect into the small intestine. You're able to see the U-shaped structure that's connecting the stomach into this large intestine. Now, while the food goes from the stomach into the intestine, it is acted on by two different organs. You're able to see that right here a large reddish brown organ called as the liver and a much smaller yellow organ known as the pancreas. Both of these organs are going to help in the complete digestion of food. If digestion is completed, then why do we have this entire large tube-like structure? Then what purpose does that serve? Well, that's where absorption comes in. If we go deeper into the small intestine, we are going to find finger-like projections called villi which will absorb the food that will help transport it to the cells and get us the much needed energy for our day-to-day -day activities. The undigested food, however, will pass through a much larger tube called the large intestine which leads to the rectum and is finally passed out through the anus, thereby completing the digestive there you have it. This is how food is digested. Thank you. Sorry. Hello guys, how are you all? Today we are going to discuss about a new problem called upstream and downstream problems. This is one of the important problem that comes in linear equations chapter. From the examination point of view, from the board examination point of view, this problem is very very important. So in this, in this particular problem, we will be discussing about an application of linear equations. So we have to discuss about one situation here. So consider a still water, consider a still water, there, there is a boat. Let us assume that the speed of the boat is x kilometer per hour. And so speed of the boat is fixed always here because the water is not moving. If the boat goes right or left, the speed of the water, speed of the boat will be same. That is x kilometer per hour. It will never change. Now here we are going to change the situation little more. So we will be discussing about the situation where the flow of water is there. Like there is a stream of water which is going downwards and I am keeping the same boat here, over here. So this boat can move towards down or it can move towards up. So when the boat goes down, we call that situation as downstream. If the boat goes up, we call that situation as upstream. So here there is a speed for the boat. As usual, we will take it as x and there is a speed for the stream which is going downwards always it will go down and the speed of the stream will be y y kilometer per hour so we have here two speeds speed of the boat and the speed of the stream now let's see what is going to happen here so here let us consider two points one point here that is a another point here that is b one below one above so that when boat goes downwards we will say that it is moving from the point b to a if the bo boat is moving upwards we will say that the boat is moving from the point a to b so the downward movement we call it as downstream upward we call it as upstream so here let us consider the first case when the boat boat goes down the downstream so here the downstream speed will be the total speed occurred by this boat so we know that when the boat goes down, because of the speed of the water, the speed of the boat, it will slightly increase. Boat will move much faster than its usual speed. So that speed we call it as the downstream speed. And that speed is given by speed of the boat plus the speed of the stream will be added. So we get total speed is equal to speed of the boat plus speed of the stream. And we have already taken speed of the boat as x, speed of the stream as y, it is here already mentioned in the figure. So downstream speed will be given by speed of the boat that is x, speed of the stream that is y. So this is the first equation that we use to solve this type of problems. The down speed, downstream speed, the total speed will be x plus 
y now let us consider another case where we have the boat is going upwards okay so in that case if the boat is going upward we will call it as yeah similarly there will be another situation there is boat is moving upward so we will call it as the upstream situation so in that case you know that boat will go much slower than as usual speed because the water is going downwards right so water will block the boat and the speed of the boat will be slightly reduced so total speed of the boat it will be given by speed of the boat minus speed of the stream okay so that is given by x minus y so we call it as the upstream speed okay and you know because when we move forward somebody is blocking us we know that we cannot move as fast as possible right the speed will be reduced so total speed will be the speed of the person who is moving and the speed of the person who is blocking so it will come like that so it will become x minus y so in the given question usually in the question what they will give the distance ab will be given the distance ab you know that the point where it is at the bottom and which is at the top so that distance will be given and we have to use the formula total time is and also what is given the total time for upstream and downstream will be given the total time to go up and to come down okay that is will be given so total time is given by time for upstream to go up plus the time for downstream to come back right so this is the total time so we have total time is given by upstream distance divided by upstream speed we are converting time into distance by speed by using the time distance speed formula so here also we have time for downstream is given by downstream distance by downstream speed again we are converting it into distance by speed formula so this is the formula that we are going to use in the problem mainly okay so here we have total time is given by the distance ab divided by x minus y we already defined x minus y as the upstream speed and the time b this is total time for ba will be the distance ba divided by the speed for the downstream it is x plus y so upstream time plus downstream time it is converted in terms of distance and speed so ab by x minus y plus ba by x minus x plus y this is how the equation is formed and we will replace the given value from the question in this equation okay so for example let us quickly go through this question we will make a equation quickly a boat covers 32 km upstream 36 km downstream it goes up and it comes down 32 km up 36 km down in total 7 hours also second situation is given it covers upstream the 40 km and downstream 48 km in 9 hours we need to find the speed of the boat and the speed of the stream we need to find basically x and y so how we are going to form the equation let us see quickly okay so here we have taken two cases case 1 and case 2 in the first case it is given upstream distance 32 downstream distance 36 and the total time required is 7 hour second case it is given upstream distance is 40 and the downstream distance is 48 and the total time is 9 hours so we know that upstream speed is x minus y downstream speed is x plus y just before we have discussed about this one we already written okay so where x is the speed of the boat and y is the speed of the stream so see how we are going to make the equation that's it it's very simple the so upstream distance by down, upstream speed plus downstream distance by downstream speed equal to total time the equation just before i have explained this one how we are getting this equation so just replace the value what is the upstream distance 32 upstream speed x minus y downstream distance 36 downstream speed x plus y total time is 7 this equation one refers to the first case only that is this one for the case one only for this one Similarly you can make another equation based on the case 2 that is what written here similarly you can make this equation okay so it's very easy to do distance by speed distance by speed equal to the total time here also we will follow the same method we will get two equations and we already studied how to solve this equation by using that method you can solve find the values of x and y that's it so this is what i just want to explain in this particular